Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Choose to Lose campaign. Where we're trying to beat the game on the highest difficulty with a few mods, ABA and ABC, a better advent and a better chosen, as well as much lower scaling of our folks and a few lesser items than usual. So, niche builds for the win. Today it is Operation Frost Home. Protect the device, which always is a pretty nasty mission in itself. And I'm wondering to which degree we're even bringing this team with us, or if we want to maybe take only rookies with us. Given that we have the GTS, we will have enough time to train newcomers. And the next in line indeed would be Quick Feet, so might as well take him with us. Quick Feet as a rookie is going to get the flashbang grenade. And we can thankfully get a few extra weapons. Marksman's sniper rifle from the DLC content, traditional handgun as well. So Jessica Jones will have a really nice gun. Wards here. We'll use her grenades and well she can do weapon upgrades i would like to give her the stop oh, no, 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 no. we're not giving her a weapon upgrade yet because she can take the light machine gun and that already has the stock built in fantastic can't use any other grenades so light machine gun also from the dlc that i would highly recommend everybody plays it is a fantastic one and we got an old world assault rifle that Frodo is going to use. Unfortunately, nothing for Frodo, but they can use at this point. In terms of uh, just layout, I like that little bit more heavy armor style. Gives her a clunky look, but um, I would say function over form. They don't need to look sexy, they just need to withstand some of the shots, five hit points, barely enough to survive. So that's our team. We're going to use Quick Feet kind of as a recon unit. And he's going to go in and will potentially scout for us. The next one who's going to be promoted would be a ranger. So having Quick Feet as a ranger is not a bad deal at all. Good, surprise, surprise, we have just sure landed. Fantastic. Take out any hostile targets nearby, secure the AO, and protect that device. Good, we gotta protect the device over here. Got that typical L-shaped formation of a sewer here. And I would guess three packs that we have to deal with. Given that we just started, might as well move all the way and sprint. Protect the device mission 10 to be absolutely time critical, so... Double time. That is why I want everyone in this, Let's do this. in this team to just sprint as far as we can. Keep in mind, I will try to not use... Okay. Well, sector plus two. I will not try to use the grenades on the specialist and on the sniper, which means only Wurz has the grenades and we got a flashbang grenade on quick feet here. Moving out. Moving over. No one, okay. Dangerous to move to here. There's the second pack, which means there's just one more pack. So we got that pack, that pack, and there's a third one somewhere. Rolling. Jessica moves into a position where we could engage those guys. Copy that. Moving up here. And quick feet. That's a good question. Position confirmed. All right, Overwatch for now. The last pack is here, which means we can safely engage. 
and an officer could take a nice little hit. That guy could take a hit. So how about Frodo is just doing the Overwatch really? And Jessica Rabbit Jones will start with the admin officer. That's not a kill, unfortunately. They're starting to run. There's the Overwatch and there's the kill. Fantastic. Good. We know that the enemies are over there. We also know they are inside, so I'm going to use that knowledge to essentially move up. Knowing that that is likely not going to trigger anyone. Enemy destroyed. And that's a flanking shot plus a promotion well earned. Wards moves up and gives fire support with the stock that is at least one point of damage. In the meantime, I think we got four, three, four, so ten points of damage. And that means one third of the hit points On of the device are gone. Orders confirmed. Moving out. Jessica Rabbit. We'll send a full cover over here. It's a sniper, not the worst idea. And double movement as well, so I want to aggressively move up. We're potentially going to fight against multiple enemies. Was that a miss, really? Okay, cool. I am wondering how we're going to engage that. The obvious choice would be high ground, but we do not have that available. Could use a nice grenade as an explosion to draw them out. Position confirmed. Decent cover over here. Oh, that would be a fantastic hit. It's not even hitting the device itself. <laughs> hmm. Why not? Let's try it. There is no perfect way on pulling those guys. There is a high likelihood that you pull two of the pegs. The same go. Frodo moves into full cover. Overwatches. I mean, yeah, you could go with flashbang now, but that might be a bit excessive. Really got some solid cover over here. Might as well reload Overwatch. Overwatch. Jessica moves into full cover into a better spot and we're overwatching from there just in case someone comes in. No reaction. Well, no reaction is fine by me. Because no reaction also means that this year will not be retaliated upon. Two kills. And we're good. Moving into full cover. 
same deal over here. And reloading pistol overwatch. Okay, I do have a decent idea of how I want to breach. Moving over here. Which is fine. Perfect. Not the worst breach. I thought I could be out of uh, range. That was unfortunately not the case, but it is not the worst uh, that could have happened. Good. Now it's time to find kind of that right flank. Of course, we could simply try to get rid of the cover. Quick feet. Could use the flashbang to our advantage. We do have a decent position overall, but they could also try to flank us. Which of course we don't want to let happen. We could somehow get into a flanking position, like right over here. That would be fantastic. Let's just double check if we're going to move over here. That will still allow us to see the sector. But I would want to go for the advents first. So kind of an obvious choice is to move over here, flank and go for it. Problem that I'm seeing is the sector could theoretically move on and try to flank us in return. It's a bit of a risk versus reward play. What we could do is we could use that explosive in order to get him down. I already said that in the first few missions I might be more lenient, but let's try to not use those. Hmm. It's a more difficult spot than I would have expected. Moving over here. Solid position. 50% to kill that admin trooper. Not good. And that's not a hit, which is fine. I think in terms of just getting full cover let's have the aid protocol over here all right and this should kill the trooper there we go one trooper down that's only a 50 50. Uh, we can instead use the flashbang however that will reduce the chance for mind spin and for a reanimation, both of which would be great. We're in full cover, so I actually am I'm actually thinking that this 50-50 might be better. Could move up and kill uh, the guy straight up. But we would potentially be retaliated upon from the sector. So let's go for the 50-50. Stock can finish the guy next turn. Yep, there is the mind control. What's in my... nothing. It's nothing. 
I forgot that they are focusing on the objective, of course. Stupid me. Moving up. That solves the mind control issue. It's only half cover, but it is a powerful position to control almost everything. Stock kill would be 100%, so not a problem. Well, that's still a 60% chance to hit the guy. Let's just reload. We're in a decent position. I don't see any need to completely compromise ourselves. There we go. That's a kill. And although that's just a 40% chance, might as well still take it. There is a chance to remove the cover. Wasn't happening, but next turn we can... Certainly engage on to him. They must have improved the chance for mind control. It's atypical that you would see mind control sticking that easily. Moving, to designated coordinates. Moving up. That's a nice hit. Fantastic. Good job. Alright, now I want to make sure that we're going to get this guy. Enemy destroyed. Status confirmed. All hostiles are down and the area is secure. Okay, overall okay, I would say. Some of the things could have been a bit better. I did not notice a major difference in the AI so far. But I'm also cautious, I'm just not offering any obvious flanks at that point good we're landing and the team is looking smooth wow even more promotions fantastic okay from now on we are always selecting the worst ability i would always go for medical protocol i know that a lot of you um well, my viewers tend to be smart and pick medical protocol and there had been a nice discussion on Reddit about medical protocol and combat protocol. TLDR medical protocol is objectively better than uh, combat protocol. Nonetheless, combat protocol is okay. You haven't seen a lot of combat protocol on my channel. Hence, we're going to go with combat protocol. Words. I mean, Shredder versus Blast padding is not even close. Shredder is the objective way to go here. So we're going with Blast padding and giving her a really nice clunky look. She now has Armor 1 as an addition. You can see that the reduced hit point growth is already taking effect. The way that I've modeled it, every second hit point growth is being skipped. Normally she would be at 6 health but that has now been skipped so she's still at five which will make the whole process specifically in the end game a little bit more interesting and we got ourselves quick feet is an assault larum core is good advanced stock is fantastic and we got an engineer great on the latest so Excellent we're definitely Commander, your efforts going to, to use that engineer for an extraction. The, the GTS is good, but 
clearing alien debris is better. A couple of hygiene factors. Now that we got quick feet here, let's customize it. Color coding is an integral part. I cannot imagine how anyone could play without color coding. It makes it so much easier to understand who is who on the battlefield. Good. So we got one engineer. We got the black side. We got supplies that we don't need at this point. We're going for the second engineer. No questions asked. Supplies are good. We potentially will scan for them. But that extra engineer here will be valuable, very valuable. Worth its weight in gold, or supplies rather. Got some hybrid materials, fantastic. Nanoscale vest is definitely something that I'd like to build. And we got a training breakthrough. Reassessment of planning will lead to 50% reduction in the cost of building a training center. Would we want to have a 50% reduction for a training center um, cost? That sounds like a stupid investment of time. I'm not going to do it. In a true fashion of a choose to lose campaign, you would actually do it. But I feel we've already have so much things stacked against us. I don't need to play stupid on top of it. So we're not going to do it. Resistance communication is not bad. That will give us the option for continent, bony, and make contact. So let's just start with that. I foresee a number of valuable applications stemming from this technology. I'll have a report assembled as soon as the research is Good. Complete. Second engineer is ready. Benjamin Taylor. Benjamin, welcome on board. You are godsend. Starting the excavation over here takes 30 days, which is unfortunate, but we can hopefully clear the debris up here. Okie dokie. So we're, we're making progress all around. Some more supplies will help us to build those new items. And we got two engineers. We're of course lacking on the scientist department, but you can't have it all, right? Can't have two engineers right from the get-go. But you can have two scientists and uh, two engineers and get a scientist and a sharpshooter and a specialist and intel on top of it. Oh my gosh, now that is such a nice reward. Yeah, we're... Why would you not do that? That is the best reward that you could hope for. So of course we're going to do it. In terms of engineering, is there anything that we can build armor-wise? Nanoscale vest still costs 60 supplies. That's a bit, bit steep for the time being. I'm going to build it eventually, and I'm also going to build that smoke grenade eventually. But for now, we got to deal with the funds that we do have, which is not a lot. Next time, we're going to have a council mission. And that is typically the kind of mission to get you started. An extra specialist, an extra sniper. That's not bad. Seeing specifically how the snipers had a bad reputation on Reddit for being extra weak in the early game. We're going to take a look if that is really the case. We'll, pl we'll play them a little bit different. Jessica did a good, okay job so far. But yeah, we haven't even gotten any of the abilities yet. That'll eventually happen as time goes by. Luckily, the squad side ability, which is kind of their core ability, comes with the class. I would have hated for not having squad side with the snipers. But yeah. Okay, cool. Good. That brings us to the end of uh, this episode. You still have a chance to vote uh, how many operatives we're going to lose in the Choose to Lose campaign. And... Other than that, smash the like button as always, guys, and see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.